Welcome, friends. It is good for us to be reminded on this Christ the King Sunday that our Lord is in control, and he is worthy to receive power and wisdom and strength and all of our praise, not only today, but every day. Hear these words from Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Let's begin today with prayer. Let us pray. Oh, we approach you, almighty and everlasting God. With confidence, you are our glorious ruler. You have willed to restore all things in your beloved Son, who is our Lord and King. Grant that the people of the earth, now divided and enslaved by guilt and shame, may be freed and brought together under the gentle and loving rule of Jesus Christ. We acknowledge we are slow to accept Christ's kingship and fail to be governed by justice and love. In your mercy, forgive us. Raise us to acclaim Christ as Lord of all so that we might be loyal ambassadors, obeying the commands of Jesus in whose name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news, my friends. Jesus Christ has triumphed. With his blood, he has purchased people for God and made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth now and forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive and extend peace to one another. So may the peace of Christ be with you, my friends, and you may respond and also with you. As we approach the word of God today, uh, let's ask for the Spirit's help. Most high God, grant to us your Holy Spirit so that in these words of Holy Scripture, our hearts might be lifted up, our minds set on heavenly realities, and our actions reflect the joy of Christ's eternal kingdom. Amen. Today I'm going to read from the book of Ephesians. These are the words of the Apostle Paul. It is a prayer for the church. Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 15 to 23. Ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, 
not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. This is the word of the Lord to us today. Thanks be to God. Christ the King Sunday is intended to help us see this cosmic reality that Jesus reigns over all creation as the only rightful sovereign of the universe. And this Sunday always comes just before Advent so that we remember to anticipate both a baby and a king. Christ is Lord means that he is king. Um, and since Christ is king, I am not, and neither are you. There's only one king, only one rightful king. And yet, uh, in this old fallen world, Christ as king does expose a few uh, problems that we experience here. First of all, a whole lot of people are building personal petty kingdoms and setting themselves up as masters over very small worlds. People who have been hurt, well, which is really all of us, we all have, we often attempt to kind of seize power for ourselves in order to avoid ever being hurt again or in the belief that if we could have power, if we were in control, we could stop um, others from getting hurt. You know, the classic villains of movies and literature and comic books are the ones who seek to destroy the earth so that they then can rebuild it uh, in their own idea, their own image of how things should operate. Instead of submitting to Christ's rule, which we may feel uncertain or uh, insecure about, we will control our little ends of the world in order to protect ourselves uh, from ever uh, getting hurt again or experiencing more pain. The other uh, problem, a second problem, which the kingship of Jesus um, sheds light on, is that um, sometimes many people bow to other kings uh, besides the rightful king, Jesus. When we are distressed, we might rely on another ruler to address our hard circumstances, we look for somebody else uh, to help. We might expect other people to give us only what Jesus can provide to us as a way out of our situation or our problems. And instead of taking the gospel road of confession and repentance through Jesus Christ, we may run to human authorities to cope with whatever is going on in our lives. And then finally, and the one we're going to uh, address today, is that we may lack awareness of the power we possess as subjects of King Jesus. Christians possess authority in Jesus Christ. And as believers in Jesus, we reign with him. And we can exercise authority over every dominion that exists, especially the dominion of darkness. The Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesian believers provides God's design for the church. It is a plan for believers to know their spiritual blessings 
and to exercise the power they have as Christians united to Christ. God wants us to understand uh, this power and authority and to actively use it. We will know King Jesus better by availing ourselves of his authority given to us as believers. You see, Jesus doesn't just hold all power. He shares that power and authority with his followers. We have a clear understanding in Ephesians of how to pray. Paul prayed and his uh, great prayer for us is that we would know Jesus better. There's probably no higher prayer than that. To intimately, experientially know Christ and to continue to know him better. And Paul prayed that we would know the hope to which we have been called and this incomparably great power for us who believe. The word for power here that Paul uses and throughout the New Testament, when you see the word power, it's where um, we get our word uh, dynamite. The Greek word is dunamis, and we get our word dynamite from that. When I was a kid, we had a neighbor a mile down the road who had a fondness uh for playing with dynamite, especially when he drank too much. And even though he lived a mile down the road, when he blew up a tree stump or anything else on his property, it would shake our house and it would feel like the window windows were gonna break. One stick of dynamite is nothing compared to the incredible power of God. This divine power is for us who believe in Jesus the King. It is the same power used to raise Jesus from the dead and exalt Christ as Lord of the universe. The rule and reign of Jesus is far above any other existing authority, including powers and authorities of the dark domain. When it comes to dealing with powers of darkness, we have the authority of Jesus Christ. We have a vital and inseparable union with Jesus Christ because of his resurrection and exaltation. Jesus redeemed us and we belong to him. We are adopted children of God. Since all earthly and spiritual powers are subject to Christ, they are also subject to us. The imagery of Jesus as head and believers in Jesus as the body of Christ means we have an inseparable union together. Since we are united with Christ, we share his authority over all spiritual powers. It is one thing to know this information. It is quite another thing to use it. God wants us to experience Christ's power through exercising our authority as believers. We are to pray in a way which links faith and knowledge together in this confident use of spiritual authority. We have incredible rights, my friends, as blood-bought children of God. All the pronouns used by Paul in the book of Ephesians are plural. Uh, and that means that tackling the forces of darkness needs to be a um, communal activity. Because going it alone, uh, the Lone Ranger Christian doesn't exist in the New Testament. That's risky business. That's uh, putting ourselves in danger. Now I'm gonna pray and I want you to pray with me. And this prayer that I'm going to pray, I'm going to say with some flavor. And it, because I'm going to boldly exercise authority in Jesus Christ. It is a confident coming to the throne of grace. So this isn't 
um, like a uh, couple of sentence, sentence blessing at the end of a sermon. Um, this is authoritative prayer taking up uh, the power that has been given to us in Christ. So let us now pray. God Almighty, we bow in worship and prayer before you. We praise you. We thank you that the Lord Jesus Christ is king over all creation, that he is the rightful sovereign of the universe. We thank you that because of this truth, we have power together with Christ. Since Jesus is king, we surrender ourselves completely in every area of our lives to you. Since Christ's authority extends over every dominion, including the dominion of darkness, we now take a stand against all the work of Satan that would hinder us now in prayer. We address ourselves only to the true and loving God and refuse any involvement of Satan in our prayers. Therefore, Satan, we command you as the body of Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to leave our presence with all your demons. We bring the blood of Jesus Christ between us. Sovereign God, we recognize you are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. We renew our allegiance to you and ask that the Holy Spirit will enable us to pray. We are thankful, Lord God, that you have loved us from eternity past and that you sent the Lord Jesus Christ into the world to die as our substitute. We are thankful that Christ has completely forgiven us you have adopted us into your family. You have given us eternal life. You have offered yourself to us to be our daily help and strength. And so glorious God, open our eyes so that we will see how great you are and how complete your provision is for us this day. We are thankful that the victory Jesus Christ won for us on the cross and in his resurrection has been given to us and that we are seated with the Lord Jesus in heaven. We take our place with him. We recognize by faith that all wicked spirits and even Satan himself are under our feet. So we declare that Satan and his demons are subject to us in the name of of Jesus Christ. We are thankful for the spiritual armor you have provided. We put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the sandals of peace, and the helmet of salvation. We lift up the shield of faith against all the fiery arrows of the enemy, and we take in our hands the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. We choose to use your word against all the forces of evil in our lives. We live and pray in complete dependence upon you, blessed Holy Spirit. We are grateful for the Lord Jesus Christ because he disarmed all power and authority, triumphing over them all by the cross. And so we claim all victory for our lives today. We reject all the insinuations, accusations, and temptations of Satan. We affirm together that the word of God is true. And we choose to live today in the light of God's word. Almighty God, we choose to live in obedience to you and in fellowship with you. Open our eyes and show us the areas of our lives that do not please you. Cleanse us from anything that would give Satan a foothold against us. We stand into all that it means to be your adopted children. And we welcome all the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives today. By faith and in complete dependence upon you, God, 
We now put off the old sinful person and we stand into all the victory of the crucifixion where the Lord Jesus Christ provided cleansing from the sinful nature. We put on the new person and stand into all the victory of the resurrection and the provision Christ has made for us to live above sin. Today, God, we put off the old sinful nature with its selfishness and put on the new nature with its love. We put off the old nature with its fear and we put on the new nature with its courage. We put off the old nature with its deceitful lusts and we put on the new nature with its righteousness, purity, and honesty. In every way, we stand into the victory of Jesus Christ's ascension and glorification in which everything was made subject to him. He is the king and we are the subjects. And today we claim our place in Christ as victorious with him over all the enemies of our souls. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would fill us with the righteousness of Christ, break down every idol, cast out every enemy of our souls. We are thankful, mighty God. You have blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ. We are grateful you have given us new life into a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. We are thankful you have made provision for us so that today we can live filled in the Holy Spirit with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. We recognize and affirm that this is your will for us. And so in light of that, we reject and resist all the attempts of Satan and his demons to rob us of God's will. We are thankful, blessed Holy Trinity, the God whom we serve, that our spiritual weapons have divine power to demolish demonic strongholds, arguments, and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Therefore, now, in the name of Jesus, we tear down the strongholds of Satan and smash the plans of the devil that have been formed against us. We affirm, Almighty God, that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. We choose to make right decisions of faith. Powerful God, show us the ways that the enemy is hindering, tempting, lying, and distorting truth in our lives. Help us to be aggressive in prayer and in faith. Help us to think rightly and to actively practice your word. Help us to give you your rightful place in our lives as king. And so we now cover ourselves with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and pray that you, Holy Spirit, would bring all the work of Christ's crucifixion, resurrection, ascension, and all the work of Pentecost into our lives today. We deliberately intentionally surrender ourselves to King Jesus. We refuse to be discouraged because you are the God of all hope. You have given your power by resurrecting Jesus from the dead. And so we claim this victory over all dark forces in our lives, in our families, in our neighborhoods, our workplaces, our faith communities, we pray now in the name and through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. It is good for us to take up our authority in Christ 
and to pray accordingly. And so let us, as believers in Jesus, in our Almighty God, affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray uh, one last time here before we depart together. O oh, sovereign King of the universe, we praise you. We praise you for your just and righteous reign over this universe, for your providential rule over this earth, for your faithfulness to your church, for your lordship in our lives. As both king and servant, we approach your throne knowing you will listen to our prayers. Hear our prayers for the nations of this world, for our nation, for our country, for our neighborhoods and communities, and all of their leaders for your church everywhere, and all believers with needs this day. We pray in your name, loving Christ. You are sovereign servant king, amen. Thank you for joining me today. And as we depart from this virtual time together, we do so with a divine blessing. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship and the encouragement of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today and always, amen. Go in peace, brothers and sisters.